Hello, Think Keto family. Welcome back. Today, we're making a low-carb, keto-friendly beef and broccoli in the Instapot. If this is your first time with us, don't forget, hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. All right, lovelies, as always, everything I'm using today, you can find right down there in the description below. And at the end of the video, it's a nutritional information card to give you an idea of what the macro breakdown for this is. That being said, this is one of the Instapot recipes I've been playing with for a couple weeks now, and my family adores this recipe. So I just had to bring it to you guys. And I know this is an Instapot recipe, however, I will be using my pan here just to brown my meat up. Just so that you can see what I'm doing, you by all means can do that step in the Instapot on the saute feature, but you can't really see what I'm doing when I do that, so I figured I'd just brown up here really fast and transfer everything to the Instapot. Alright guys, so for the meat, I'm using beef. You can use chicken if you prefer, but then it would be chicken and broccoli, not beef and broccoli. I have about, it was roughly three pounds, just over three pounds of a flank steak here that I cut up. And I tried to go against a grain when cutting just to make it easier to tear when you're biting into it. But it's up to you what cut you want. I've used London broil in this recipe. I've actually used leftover steak and skipped the browning stuff and just added that to the recipe. It's whatever you want to do. Alright, so here I have a couple tablespoons of avocado oil already warmed up over medium heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop these pieces of meat in. You don't want to give them too long to cook. You're really just browning on the outside too. And give it... 30 to 60 seconds, flip it, 30 to 60 seconds, pull it off, and I got another bowl there for when I take it off. All right, first round done. I'm going to get all the rest of these done. I'll see y'all guys back in a few minutes. All right, my lovely. So I have finished browning up all those steak strips I had cut up. Now, I do want to mention that I have done this recipe without browning them up ahead of time. And I gotta say that the texture of the meat was not appealing at all. It was more the texture of cat food. And when you brown it ahead of time, it sets that more firm texture in on the outside. It's just much, much better. Trust me on this. Don't skip that step. I've done that, okay? So I already have my Instapot heating up on the saute feature right now. I'm just gonna throw a tablespoon of butter in and get that melted down in here. So the butter is melted down in and out. I'm gonna add, I think there's Roughly a tablespoon's worth of minced garlic in here. It's three pretty good sized cloves. So we're just going to put this in there. Keep it moving for about 30 seconds or so until it gets good and fragrant. I love the smell of garlic and butter. Oh, it's so good. All right, that is fragrant. I can smell it. You don't want to overcook that because it will burn. So if you wait too long, it'll start to scorch. And then you got to start over. Because once you burn your garlic, there's no coming back. I've got a cup of beef broth here. I'm going to add this in. I have three quarters of a cup of coconut aminos. You can always use soy sauce if you prefer, but we're having a guest for dinner tonight and they can't have soy, so we're using coconut aminos here, okay? I got two tablespoons of sesame oil. And then I got some fresh grated garlic here. There's probably about three teaspoons worth of fresh grated garlic. I didn't measure it out exactly. I just grated it until I was happy with it. Did I say garlic? That was ginger. Fresh grated ginger. About three teaspoons worth of it. All right, now it's gonna come my seasonings. And you can season this any which way from Sunday that you want, but this is how I'm doing it. I've got a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I also add a little bit of no salt to mine, um, about half a teaspoon's worth. If you've seen a lot of my other videos, I mentioned it. I use no salt for the high potassium content that it has. If you tend to get leg cramps like I do, it really helps with that. Thank you, Dr. Barry, if you've ever seen any of his videos. He turned me on to that. And my waking up with Charlie horses and my calves is gone. It's no longer happening, thank goodness. All right, I'm just going to crack a little bit of pepper into this. All right, now that all that's in there, we're going to go ahead and add the beef that we cooked up. All right, turn off the saute. Put a lid on it. Make sure your valve is closed. We're gonna pressure cook this on high for 10 minutes. That's it, now we're gonna wait. 
All right guys, so while this is cooking, I already started my cauliflower rice steaming behind me. If you don't know how I make my cauliflower, I got a video there, it shows you how I do it. I make it and I freeze it in bags and take out as much as I need and then I just steam it for 10 to 12 minutes. Um, you can by all means buy the frozen bags of cauliflower, that'll work just the same. I just find it's cheaper to make my own than to pay $3, $4 for a small little bag of it. All right, I'll see y'all back when this is done. All right guys, so my beef mixture in here just finished cooking. I did a quick release on it and it just finished releasing. So let's pop the lid on that. Oh, that smells wonderful. Put this here. All right, so I have here my broccoli. I got roughly eight cups. I have three pretty good sized heads of broccoli. We're gonna add this to our beef and juice in there, stir it in. All right, we're gonna close it back up. Pressure cook for zero minutes on high. And don't forget to make sure your valve is closed. Now, alternately, while you were waiting for the beef mixture to cook, you could have also steamed that broccoli separately. However, comma, I've got my cauliflower rice occupying my steamer and everything else is in my Instapot, so I didn't have that option, but if you do, by all means, take it. All right, this would probably take about five minutes to reach pressure and then vent it pretty immediately if you don't want your broccoli mushy. If you want it a little bit softer, leave it in there an extra minute or two before you vent it. All right, see y'all back soon. All right guys, so this has finished steaming. It beeped, now wait about one more minute. Then I just did a quick release on the steam. And there we go, it's all done. And meanwhile, my cauliflower rice finished cooking. I got some in a bowl here. I'll get some of this out so you can see what it looks like. And there we go, it's all done. So what I got here is I got some green onions just to garnish it and make it look pretty. And of course, you gotta have some sesame seeds. And voila, dinner is served. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Don't forget, leave me a thumbs up down below and share the trust me the email that you know can use a great recipe for beef and broccoli in an Instapot. Until next time, guys. Bye.